You guys aren't gonna believe this. We are on our way to pick up my new vehicle and my Civic said, I'm done, through, it's over, I'm gone. I will never work for you again. It is giving me the hardest time. We're still about an hour and a half away and I don't know if we're gonna make it there. I was really excited. I was still gonna keep the girl, but she is just done. Chris is under there checking the oil. The transmission is slipping. Jen's got a slow car. It's got oil. You gonna take over then? Yeah, I guess so. Do you think we can even make it? I don't know. All right. Leave it up there and sell it. Great. Or Uber there. It's just slipping real bad. I mean, no matter what gear you put it in, we can barely, it's like riding the clutch in a manual. Oh, yeah, we're bumpy. What's the worst that happens? I don't know. You don't really want to Uber two hours away, do you? Then we're committed. Yeah, we're, we're crawling. We're going slower than Gail the Snail. We are officially going to be leaving a snail trail behind us. Gail the Snail, top speed 45 miles per hour. Check engine lights on. There's a quick check up here, not too far, but I don't know if we'll even make it up the hill. Yeah, that's a big hill. We got cars behind us. Yeah, and I'm afraid we're gonna lose speed. Yeah, Chris really wants to get the car to the quick check. He said it's right at the top of that hill that we were just on. But it's a long hill. And there's no shoulder. There's no shoulder. Yeah, that's it's a risky not safe. Move. Yeah. But there are driveways. We don't know how many driveways. Well, let's just see what goes here real quick. Mm -hmm. We got one truck behind us. Let's see, as soon as you went into the fourth gear, it just starts slipping real. I'm just trying to keep our speed up. I don't want. All right, we made it. We okay. made it. Yeah, if you go like anything past eighth throttle, it just starts slipping. So we got like 65 it's miles an hour. It's a nail biter. We'll back into this spot. So it's easy good. for a tow truck. Good. If I. We I can. can't even reverse. Do you want me to push? Yeah, give us a little push. Hey, you're doing good. She's strong. I literally cannot believe this. You wore the transmission out. Ugh. We're requesting a lift. Pop the trunk. Let's bring the tools. You don't want to do a last resort before? No. We'll bring the ratchet straps for sure. This what are you going to do with those? Just in case. You want to ratchet strap them to the roof? Well, we got 20 minutes before our Uber gets here, our $100 Uber. I'm going to go take a leak, get some snacks, and get ready for this hour and 48 minute Uber ride. I think I make coffee. Thanks, baby. Yeah. Our you Uber's ready? nine minutes away. Now, another part of the story that we did not mention yet, the seller said he had potentially had another guy getting there at seven. We were going at six. <laughs> and I don't think that's great practice necessarily, but we're just buying the car. We just want the car. So now our Uber's set to get us there around 6.45. So I hope we don't have any beef, um, but you yeah. never know what could happen. Well, I, I told him, he said he didn't confirm with the other guy. So he was like, no, come at six, it's fine. Okay. Like, all right, just make sure to tell the other guy, you know, somebody's coming. Yeah, I don't, I don't want any drama. We don't want the other guy going there wasting his time either. And I'm also really hoping that our Uber doesn't get here and say, nah, I'm not driving an hour and 45 minutes, but we'll see what happens. 
It was an ordinary day. Jennifer's boredom got the best of her, and she decided, as many do, to Google her own name. The results were downright creepy. Did you know that data companies sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you? Your full name, email, home address, health records, even your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests on my behalf. Aura not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to gain access to my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. Aura even protects me from online threats I can't see. And it's really easy to set up. No need to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and so on and so on. I get everything at one affordable price. Now you might have one or two of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking the doors to your convertible, but leaving the top down. Aura is always on doing the hard work of keeping me safe so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to aura.com slash Jennifer to start your two week free trial. Also linked in the description. Again, I'd like to thank Aura for sponsoring today's video. All right, our driver has agreed to take us there. Thank you. You're welcome. Can we go north, right? I think so. Hopefully it's bring you back to our home too. And now we're pretty committed. We are committed. <laughs> If there's no car, <laughs> then we'll be going on Facebook locally, finding something else. Or spending another hundred dollars on an Uber. Hello, Johnny's. Thanks again. <laughs> Tools in hand. This will be my very first manual vehicle. Here it is. It's, like I said, it's a little rough looking. The paint is rough, really rough. But it's a very dependable car. Oh, it's a beauty. Yep, see. Hey, baby. Rough. I don't think anything's true, but it may be. I don't know, the bottom of the door. It does come with two doors. Did I tell you that? Yeah, yep, yep. Now, where were the mice in here? In the headliner. In the headliner, gotcha. Oh. So they had got a little pee down on the seats and stuff, I guess, too, and you cleaned I, it? I don't know. I haven't touched the seats. I don't know. I think it was in, you know, if the odor comes from the rug. I never actually found a nest. Gotcha. Or seen a mouse, but you could tell. I mean, there was some... Masters, yeah. Get out back, listen to it. Hold on. All right, go ahead. Thanks. 
rust hole under the floor there. A pillars are rusty on the bottom. The strut towers are rusty. A little rust hole in one. Like, it's not a race car. I mean, we're not doing, we're not turning this into an eight second car. It's not the end of the world. Like, you can keep driving it this way. I gotta get under there with a flashlight, look at the torque boxes. But I mean, that's that's what you get. You know, buying a car out in the desert, it's like, I'll, I'll turn it out here. Like, oh, manual wheel. It's official. I bought it. Chris said it had a little more rust than he would have hoped. The guy was negotiable. He gave us a pretty sweet deal. He knocked a lot of money off. Really nice guy. I don't think it's worth restoring this completely at this stage because of the rust, but for just a driver, I think it's gonna be great for her. Yeah, I cannot wait to have some fun in this. Chris said maybe he'll even teach me how to do a donut. And get, the, get you drifting this thing. Drifting. sounds so good. <laughs> nope. We're also missing a license plate as you guys may have seen. <laughs> Chris was like, I also don't have a plate. Um, but we're gonna get one. I'm gonna... Really rolling the dice on this one. Just don't hit the brakes. Oh yeah, just drive an hour and a half home and don't hit the brakes. Auto parts. No, there's no Riley. No. No, there's not. Riley looked open, huh? Got here just in time. Got it. This one doesn't exactly look blown, but let's see what you got. All right, I'll go hit the brakes. That's not in the socket, but there it goes. All right, good. What? It's good. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I was confused. Sweet. And you got this one out too. Do we uh, need that to get home safely? I mean, if you want to be legit when you're driving this thing, you might as well replace it. Well, we don't have time right now. No? When do they close? Like two minutes? You want to run in? Oh. What? Run. <laughs> so we'll throw both these 912 bulbs in and then you can keep that one as a spare case. Thank you, sir. Good? Um... No? This should be good. Looking good. Sure? Oh yeah. How about reverse while you're back there? Oh, nope. No reverse light. We have one. No reversing down the highway. Let's go. You hear that thing, babe? Yeah, I hear it. <laughs> See how it's surging a little bit? This is all about fuel injection. So when you're in gear, sometimes you might have, feel it starting to do this a little bit and you either accelerate or let off the accelerator or push the clutch in to slow, slowly. Cause you don't want it bucking back and forth. Remember first and reverse, it won't grind. Reverse is not synchronized, I'm looking. Hear the brake noise? I sure do. It's not working. I think it has a little uh, pool in here though. Yeah, right here, look. Fuel filler door release manual. There it goes. How about that? Look, your drain is clogged here too. See, this is supposed to drain the water out. Oh. 34.78 to fill up, huh? Yeah, not bad, right? Not bad. 
over to the old can of beans. Even though we're in an older bean can right now. All right, what's the plan? I drive in front of you. Keep on going. And then what, you'll push me if I stop rolling? I mean, at least the brakes worked, right? Yeah. Well, that was crazy. She barely made it here. We lived here. It was going so well on 95 until it wasn't. Try to accelerate real quick. Yeah. Okay. She's facing yeah. the wrong way on the street the here. That's it. That's all it's got. <laughs> no, just leave it. It's fine. We'll park it here. We're going to get the tow truck tomorrow. Like into the She's parked the wrong way on the street, but parked right in front of my mom's house, so it'll be fine. <laughs> It didn't even have another block in it. You couldn't even turn around. Yeah, we're done for it. Made it right to your mom's house. <laughs> She's pooched. All these years I've owned my Civic and it finally decided to give up. Right as it knew we were getting a new car. It's like when you have to go to the bathroom really bad and the closer you get, you have to go even more. <laughs> done. We had to slow down our speed on the way home uh, because the sunroof is opening itself. Yeah. You gotta take this off. Yeah, eventually. Just seeing if it's latched on the fender. What's going on? Yeah. What? What's up? Push up on that real quick. Yeah, it's odd. Latch is rusted away. Yeah, so under here, rust and the latch rusted off. It's great. You bought a rust bucket. <laughs> About something completely different. It's the trash, isn't it? Scrapper's delight. Look at all this conduit. We got permission. Hopefully, they'll like line a new buyer, somebody that can reuse this stuff. If not, Jen's got a little project in mind and yeah. can use it for conduit in the garage. Chris has a thing for hopping in dumpsters. Probably gonna see ourselves on some TikTok because I'm sure all these truckers have cameras. Hey, look at these crackheads in the dumpster. <laughs> what am I paying you for? <laughs> You're not paying me, are you? <laughs> Strapper's delight. Times are tough. Look at this. We wrap stuff in this. Electrics? 
How much more stuff are you gonna take? Got most of it. Still lots of good stuff in here. Including this air tank. Chris wanted me to be clear that we did get permission to be here. As he, much he was, as- <laughs> He was gonna pay to dump this. And I was like, man, they should be paying you. He's like, well, if you can take it, you'll save me money. Not that we wouldn't just hop in a random dumpster. We've done it before. It's snowing. So I figured this was the perfect time to go work on my new whip. I'm just kidding. So I've had her for some time now, but I haven't driven her until this week. I finally got it registered and insured. Kind of just getting the feel for manual again. I'm really starting to enjoy it, which I never thought I would say. Chris gave me a checklist for some basic maintenance to do on this car. Hopefully items that I can do myself. First thing I want to do is find the mouse nest. If we had the technology for Smell-O-Vision, you guys would be in for a real treat. Um, I honestly can't believe I've been driving it around town like this to the grocery store and running errands because it is stinky. You guys smell that? Oh, oh God! Oh, 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 God. Yes. No? Well, count your blessings. <laughs> I'm thinking it's either in the headliner, like the guy said, or under these back seats so i do intend to pop those out today if i get nothing else done today i want to find the nest turbo do you want to come back inside you don't have to sit out here i guess i should look up a video of how to Remove these seats. It's probably something simple. Oh, let's see. Bring it here. Some of you might be asking why I'm working outside in the cold when we have this beautiful heated garage that Chris just put up. That's because it's full. He's already filled it up. There's a car on the lift in there. There's just no room. When I go to do the maintenance on it, I'll definitely be borrowing his lift. If I can schedule an appointment to get in there. <laughs> the guy left me some goodies in the trunk. Um, I'm not really sure what they are, but. I know Chris will know when there's some more parts in this big box. How do you make it out? Uh, I didn't get very far. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the back seats out. Oh. Well, that's probably not ideal, You want to check out the new Stinkmobile? What do you think, buddy? All right. Go ahead. Go ahead, go run. You're on the hunt. The not key. It looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't know if you guys saw my last video, but Chris and I had a heck of a time with a really chewed up lug nut key. Can't imagine being on the side of the road and trying to get that lug nut off on the Jeep. It was on there so, so tight. We have our first evidence of mouse droppings. So yeah, I bet they made themselves a nice cozy home in here. Clearly this has been taken off before. So let's take it off again. But that's where we'll find them. Hey baby, I got a little surprise for you. A little 
camp stove for you to stay warm. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> He's so thoughtful sometimes. A little micro campfire. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> that is the cutest little thing I've ever seen. It folds completely flat too. It's like the size of this when it's done. Wow. They all slip apart. You're too good to me. Since I had the garage stuff full of things and you couldn't get in there, why not? <laughs> it looks like he went to find the mouse nest and he knew it was there, but the side panel, you have to take all these screws off. Well, as much as I don't feel like doing this, I am going to have to because of the evidence of the mouse turds here. I'm gonna have to pop off this side panel, which requires, um, upon investigation, popping off more panels, this one being one. I'm also going to pop that seat off, which I already got it loose off camera. But yeah, I'm just gonna take off everything I can because I don't want no mouse turds left behind. And this is why I'm not working in the garage. No room. How sweet is this little thing? The only problem is I bet you the panels are gonna warp and it's never gonna fold flat again. I'm oh. digging it. It's it keeping me warm. I don't even need, need gloves anymore. 50 feet. I'm gonna start with this little peekaboo panel. See if we have any buddies in there. Anyone home? Oh, I can see lots of mouse droppings back there. Yeah, all this insulation is definitely gonna have to come out. Makes sense why you were smelling on that side of the car more. Lily? How long have you been sitting there? Whoever put these screws back in did an excellent job. They didn't shoot through the wires from what I can see so far. I can see some evidence of nut shells, more poopy. Don't hit that, you're pretty I close know. there. Just don't hit the fire pit. A little bit more back. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, keep... What did I hit? Nothing, keep going. All right, stop. Turn the wheel to the right. You stole it. No, I didn't. <laughs> the wheel actually no, spun. <laughs> you're no, going to hit the garage, are you? This is the end of the new garage. This is the first time it's going to get hit. No, I, I can't watch this. Let me get it. No. Let me just get it real quick. I got the boot. I didn't want to hit the garage. Show off. to bring Jen out in the snow, it's actually now switching over to rain, is because she needs to get used to easing on the clutch and the brakes when in slippery conditions if she finds herself in that position. So we'll get her to a safe spot and she can feel the difference. She's only driven it on dry ground 
and you guys know, I mean, you got to go easy on the clutch and the gas because you have, we, only, we ain't got no sandbags back there and old tires and slick conditions. And remember, the bridge always freezes first. So where can we bring you? This is perfect. And we got Jen at a nice little cul-de-sac here. There's no salt on the road, still a nice lush layer, and she can learn how to break them loose. And so here's all you're gonna do. You're gonna leave it in second, turn the wheel, and then give it some gas, come off the, the clutch real quick like this. And then you're gonna you're gonna try to Remember, if you start heading toward the curb, push the clutch in, hit the brakes. But okay. You can actually try it in first first. That, that'll be better for you. All right. No tire marks, because it's wet out. Jen's first time driving in the rain. Put it in first gear and drive. Let's see what you do. Go ahead. Take park brake off. Very nice. Now, while you're in the first gear, uh, hit the gas a little bit harder when I tell you to. All right, jam the gas a little bit. Do you feel that? Now jam it a little bit harder and hold it. Just hit the gas. A little bit harder. Harder, harder. Hit it. All right, hold on, stop. There you go. Yeah, you feel it. All right, you're going to get me dizzy. Hold on, stop. Okay, stop, stop. Stop. All right. It's not as slick as we had hoped it because it switched over to rain. I want you to put it in second gear now. Okay. Second. All right. Now this time, gas it a pretty good amount and snap off the clutch pretty quick. You're, you're shooting to break those tires loose. Don't stall it. A bunch of gas, bunch of gas. And I promise you, if, if we end up hitting the curb, I'll pay for everything. All right, so here's what you're gonna do. Bring it up to 3K and then just let off the clutch. 3K, now let off. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Old Fox might have to take a good beating. Jen first donut without me in there. That was fun. Yeah, you looked good. You had good control. I got scared for a half a second when I was thinking what if she loses her direction and just <laughs> slides right into me. Alright.
that back seat up. I got some serious coinage going on here. If I add it all up, I bet it's like $2.50. I could buy myself a nice snack. What else we got? Is that a wine cork? <laughs> Somebody was in the back seat of the 86 Mustang drinking wine. I never would have expected somebody to be drinking wine in the back of an 86 manual Mustang. Like, what did they say? Excuse me, driver, can you slow down so I can uncork my bottle of wine? Do you have any Grey Poupon? Farnsworth, I do believe that well-groomed man has driven off with that Grey Poupon. Time to pop some Putley. Certainly, sir. <laughs> no. Lens of a sunglass. No evidence of mice back here, which I'm happy about. Atomic fireball. And that is an eyeliner. I can only imagine the fun that was going on back here in the 1980s. <laughs> Torque wrench. Oh. something i think there's probably another screw somewhere but we're close what's it stuck on found it this little screw tucked behind the seat no way oh, oh. it's rusty Possibly imagine, but hey, that's working on cars. I can tell you right now, I'm not putting this screw back in. Got it. I think that's the last one. In case anybody was wondering why there was toilet paper on the dashboard. Cold out. Nose is dripping. I'm about to just rip this out. I think I got all the screws, but something is hanging on. Come on. Good. <laughs> But not least, I want to thank me. 
I want to thank me for believing in me. I'm going Looney Tunes. So this is where I suspect the mice were living. And even if I don't find a mouse nest, I would imagine that just based on the poop that I found, that this is where they were living. Like, there's poop. There's poop. 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 Everywhere's a poop. Poop. Uh, yeah, even if I don't find, like, dead mice or any type of uh, nest, I'm going to tear all this out because that's probably where the smell is coming from. Oh, it smells really bad right now. This is definitely where the smell is coming from. I'm really starting to think that all this fluffy insulation might be where they they made their home. We got a wire in here. Lots more poop down there. Yeah, I kind of feel like this was the main hub. Oh, I gotta take this off. Chris just got back and he said that this should not be super fluffy like this. So, so he thinks that, that this probably was the mouse nest, right? What do yeah, you think? for sure, yeah, Th those should be sheets. As opposed to like completely fluffed out like that. Yes, yeah, so that's been fluffed out. <laughs> By a mouse. <laughs> it's like fluffing your pillow. Oh, smell back there. Look, you can take your uh, tint off real easy now. Isn't that so much better? Oh, it did leave residue though. Sticky? Sticky, uh, sticky. <laughs> yeah, you gotta vacuum all this mouse poop out of here. Gonna wrap it up for tonight, but I will see you in the morning. Now, before I start vacuuming up all this poop, as much as I don't want to be working in it any longer than I have to be, I want to take the tint off the rear windshield here just so I can get a little bit more light in. So hopefully it comes off easy, but um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a sticky residue that I'm going to have to clean up later. But let's get it off so we can get some light in here. I can't even see out this back window when I try to drive at night. It's time to go. I want to try and get it off all in one piece. It seems like that's going to be a little more difficult than I thought. Whatever. that's good enough for now at least I have some more light but I'm gonna probably need some kind of chemical to get the rest of the, the second layer off <laughs> now some of you might ask why don't I just open the trunk for more light <laughs> and the reason for that is that I forgot it was a hatchback I could just open the trunk so let's open the trunk like perfume. Hey, babe, you wanna know how dumb I am? How dumb are you? I said in my video to get more light in the back of the car, I had to remove the tint first. Yeah, because the sun's coming in. You don't think there's anything else I could have done? We could turn a light on. What do you mean? It's a hatchback! Oh, yeah, or open it, yeah. I guess you're pretty dumb too, huh? <laughs> I mean, you should take the tent off. Bro. I did, but I was rolling around in mouse turd. Oh, boy. Get it cleaned up. Always the brightest bulb. Look at all that light.
feels a little better. I still got work to do. I want to remove the seatbelt completely. It looks like it's just this one screw. That way I can get this plastic side panel off and suck up whatever's behind it. This could be like mechanics yoga. You guys working on cars must be pretty flexible. Definitely where the mice were hanging out. And not only did I find the mouse nest, but I think upon following this drip, I think I found a leak too. And it looks like it's coming from right here. So that's good news um, because clearly water is getting in. It was probably like a little private stream for these mice. But they have since vacated on their own. I didn't even have to evict them. Look at the leak. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep, you're running down. See that window leaking? Yeah. What, what should I do? Yeah, just leave it. It'll be all right. Just leave it. <laughs> and if I had to take my best guess as to where the mice were getting in, this is probably their front door. Got some. I don't know if you can really see, but there's definitely some rot. Easy entry right there. Check this out. Empire State Building Observatories. Wonder if there's a date. I don't see a date, but that's pretty cool. So the Mustang's been to New York. I'm a little scared what's gonna follow me when I take the headliner off. Uh, I'm gonna say we have potential evidence of another mouse nest. I'm scared. Yeah, I think so. Can you can you see that? Oh yeah. Oh boy. I'm just gonna take a minute. So that's why it smells on your side. <laughs> you got droppings on your leg. I see that. <laughs> you gotta identify all the places they might be getting in. Like, look, you got a hole here. Even though they can't really get between the doors, so I guess that's not yeah. true. But did, did you show? Oh. Oh boy, oh boy, did you see that just fell on its own? <laughs> wow. Oh. Holy nice. cow. We found the mother load. Cow. 
Nice job, Jen. Nice job. And to think, I just vacuumed. an apple juice. I just did another sniff test of the insulation in the back uh, hatch here and you wouldn't believe it. Wait a minute. It still smells. <laughs> it still smells. I sniffed the top. That smells fine. Here's the culprit. So out she goes. It smells like pee. That's a pass. Yeah. And then you leave tension on it. Uh, yeah, leave, leave that up. Not with a ton of tension, but just leave it up on there. Like that. And then, you know, grab it, wiggle it. Perfectly fine. If it was going to fall, it would fall now. So you're safe to work on today. Great. Hello, everybody. Let's get back to maintenance on the car. Get back, get back, get back. Get back. So I still have my work cut out for me. Chris gave me a pretty lengthy list of maintenance. The first thing I'm going to tackle is changing the oil. Now that might sound easy peasy for all you guys, but I've only done one oil change on my car before and it was completely supervised. This time I'm all by myself. Chris went to buy, I don't know, wheels, a car, a boat. For all I know, he could be coming home with a helicopter today. He's not here, we got it up on the jack stands, gave it a good shake test, and um, yeah, I don't see how this could go wrong. Chris did give me one piece of advice. He said, make sure that I warm the engine up a touch. Five or 10 minutes should do the trick. He said, that way the oil will come out much easier. So, let's get back. This is not going to be fun. And yes, the lift is still occupado. Oh. I watched your video, how to change your oil on an 86 Fox body. And it said there's two chambers. It said to drain this one first. It's a little leaky. Uh, the other chamber is um, over here somewhere, probably somewhere on the other side of the jack. So I'm gonna crawl out and see if I can find it on the other side. But yeah, we'll start with that one and uh, hope it goes smooth. Get out of here. This hat's gonna be ruined. There's the other one in the front. That one's much more accessible brought a few with me, so I didn't have to keep going back and forth. Hopefully one of them fits. No, it's not big enough. No. It's not big enough. Let's roll back out of here. My guess is it's the three quarter because that's the one that was missing. So I would assume that's because Chris uses that quite often. Let's try the three quarter. Ding, ding, ding. 
I'd say we're ready to let her squirt. change Jen calm down here comes I'm like really excited for no reason I'm really excited Slow down to a trickle. Did that is there? There's no way I did that, right? and clean that up a little bit before I tighten it with the wrench. Hey buddy. <laughs> Righty tighty lefty Lucy. The guy said you don't have to go overly tight um, I think that's pretty good. Time will tell. This one's gonna be a little harder. Not gonna work. How many times am I gonna try? I need something more compact. They're not even the same size. Oh, damn, that's tight. again. <laughs> How many of you guys dropped your bolt in the oil pan? I'm sure it's just a rookie thing. Great place for the jack, huh? I'm making a mess.
big old mess. Good, good and tight. Now, just to find where to put the oil and look for the dipstick. Well, that says oil on it, so I'm assuming that's where that goes. I still don't see the oil dipstick. Where is this darn dipstick? Hmm. I looked up how much oil to put in a Fox Body 86 Mustang, and it said five quarts. So that's what we're gonna do. Is that it? I think so. I don't know what else it would be. Bone dry. Let's put our oil in. Chris always does the sniff test. I figure that's just part of the job. It smells good to me. Just to confirm, it says engine oil, because knowing me, I would put oil in the cooling system or somewhere else it's not supposed to go. <laughs> Let's check our fun dip stick again and see if we are at the appropriate level. Looks like we're maybe a touch over. Um, well, that went way better than expected. Oops, I forgot something. Good thing I didn't start the engine yet. There's our old filter. Looks pretty accessible. Hopefully I can get it out with just my hands. But the guy in the video I watched used this funny looking claw thing if I can't get it out with my hands. Gus, you can't have that. What is it? Hey. 
He's like a bull. Hi. <laughs> Drop it. Good boy. Look, look, look. That's a fit. No. Well, yes, you got the mechanic grin. Yeah, I've been working on the same thing for a half hour. The simplest thing, and it's not done. Oh, I get that grin too, baby. Ah! Why is it always so easy looking in the videos? Oh, you watched the video on how to do it? Yeah. Yeah, they can be really tight. <sighs> yeah. I'm gonna need some more yeah. muscle. I felt it doesn't even look too old. You got a wrench on there and it slipped? This slipped on it? Uh, maybe I just wasn't. Cause I got a three jaw like I was telling you that might, you know, that gets most of them. Oh yeah, that's not grabbing good. What were you getting? From the bottom with the... I tried both. With the wrench? Yeah, there was no way you were going to get that from the bottom. This. Oh. You want to try this? Yes. Here, I'm going to give you... What did you get from the top or the bottom? Just from the top. Just make sure when you put this on there, obviously these can spin both ways, so you got to have this one off. And make sure you get it like seated on there, and if it starts slipping, just reseat it. It's got its seat into the filter real good. It's gonna squeeze down on the filter. Okay. I guess a basic understanding of how a tool works would be helpful. Okay, I see. I see what it's doing. You guys ever see one of these? I wouldn't even know what I was looking at if I found this in his toolbox. Is this designed specifically for this job? Yeah. How do you work around all these hoses? <laughs> Oops. What happens if I just start pulling hoses off? No, uh, I don't know which ones you're talking about. I mean, the answer is, I guess it depends. What if I just, I'm just gonna do it. I took one off. I don't know what it was. So you may not want to learn to be a mechanic, but that's where your future is, babe. Oh, I got it! I got a little spin. Now I have to put um, like a pan down there, right? Because it's going to leak. It's spinning. I may have celebrated too soon. I saw it move and I got really excited. It may have moved, I don't know. Yeah, it is moving. I am really chewing up this oil filter. Almost spinnable by hand. It's like when grandma needs help opening a pickle jar. I think we're at the point where I could help grandma. Oh yeah. All right, let's get a pan, put her underneath and pop the new one on. Are you enjoying yourself? Oh, this is lovely. I love this. This is so fun. Mouse turds <laughs> and mosquitoes for life. <laughs> I had the mouse turds in mind, but no mosquitoes. People are going to say, why the heck are you laying on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm working. You know. He's just trying to sympathize with, with me. Oh he feels bad that I can't use the lift. Yeah, that's it. Ow! Let's not forget to put that hose back on. 
beauty. My drip pan. All right, out with the old. Comes the oil. Oh, the wind, the wind. <laughs> I kind of just shot off. Had a mind of its own. Definitely not. Operator error. If I was on the side of the road, there's no way I could have gotten that off. But then again, who's changing an oil filter on the side of the road? Well, that's the idea. I got a ratchet strap, and then we use some leverage. Is that all your weight? That's it. All right, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. That was a tight filter. Do you even need an oil filter? Well, yeah. You don't need to replace it, but you do need one, yes. Like your car wouldn't go run without it? Correct. And in with the new. Who are you? <laughs> oh, is that what he says? Yeah, out with the old, in with the new is his thing. Well, it's not that original. Sorry, Chris Fix. Wait, aren't I supposed to put like a little love note on it? Yeah. told me to put a dab of the used motor oil on the o-ring for a reason, to make her a better mechanic. Yep, there you go, babe. No. You're not centering the threads. I'm taking it off and redoing it. What? I'm taking it off. This is the reality, No, babe. I'm doing it. If, if it's doable, I'm doing it. That's what... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so that is one of the things I got a bunch of jobs. That's one of the things where if a mechanic babe. Was at work was spending all his time doing it, we would make fun of him. And go. <laughs> she said, "Yeah." What'd you say? I said. What'd you say? No. Get out of here! You look like a gargoyle. What you doing under there? <laughs> the peanut gallery, back at it again. Okay. Well, that took the better part of an hour and a half. I can assure you if I was working at a shop, they would not be paying me the big bucks. All clear.
working in the mud pit. Nice. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun, but boy, do I still have a lot to learn. Now, Chris gave me a pretty lengthy list of items I should check on the Mustang. After tackling some of the easier items myself, we put her up on the lift to do a more thorough inspection. We popped off the wheels. Well, I attempted to pop off the wheels anyway. How did you... What's that? Can't get it off. Sometimes the aluminum can get corroded. And I usually put my hand up so you can hit it like that. There you go. Oh, is that what the problem was? Yeah, it's just a little tight. Bring that to the... Can you drop it? We changed the gasket around the oil pan bowl because it was dripping ever so slightly. It's a little leaky. Yeah, I know. I should have done that when the oil tank was empty. But hey, yeah, you know me. I plugged the hole with my thumb like the tail of the little Dutch boy, and Chris slipped the new gasket on and stopped the leak. We checked to see that the transmission fluid was up to level. It's good. Let me see the transmission's leaking a touch and the trans mount oil soaked and shot. Also found that the inner tie rod end on the driver's side needs to be replaced. Excessive play, easy fix. I have the part on order and we'll be doing that ASAP. We found a pretty bad rust hole on the passenger side floor and the passenger side strut tower is rusting out too. But hey, that's to be expected with a car this old in our area. I need to replace some bushings in the future as well. Sway bar link bushings deteriorating, probably start making noise soon. And then your sway bar bushings, big gap there on both sides. So that's uh, gonna start making noise over bumps. And back to that sound we heard in the beginning of the video. Ooh, that sound. Drum brakes in the back. We believe uh, these might be out of round, just a touch, or could even be a slightly bent axle. And as these, as we're hitting the brakes, uh, the shoes doing this a little bit, rocking back and forth, and these contact pads back here, see how they're all rusty? I think if we just put a little grease, dab of grease on there, that'll take care of it. And the spring is broken. Brake system ends. Staged? Yes. <laughs> Very staged. <laughs> but we did actually have that. It's my only one. I said she's got to order me another. And yes, Chris made me film him getting the in-stock spring from his massive hardware collection. I'll never forget early on when we were dating, he said nothing would make him happier than to have me help him organize his washers. So we sat there in the old garage for hours, drinking beers and organizing hardware. I joke around with him a lot about his collection, but it saved us so much time over the years with projects and has certainly gotten us out of some jammies. Chris has been showing me some tips and tricks of the trade and some things are really starting to click. I've been struggling quite a bit and will never be an expert, but I'm really enjoying the ride and learning new things. I'd really love to thank you all for watching, subscribing, commenting, giving me advice, and not being too hard on this rookie. It means so much to me. I still intend to post more content on my new second channel, so if you haven't yet, please feel free to head over there to Jennifer Student 2. I'll put the link in the description. And that'll pretty much wrap this one up. But hey, I can't end on that note. We're doing some more donuts.
it's, you know, it's one o'clock in the morning and these people are sleeping. What, you thought there was a cop? I did. <laughs> it did look like it. And Carla. Let's get out of here. He says this again. All right, come on, guys, let's go. Go here. He's now actually, I don't, he's really cold. I'm gonna pee and go in, if you don't mind. Gus, don't eat the yellow snow. <laughs> and just a quick update on my Honda. She's working for me again. Am I crazy? Or didn't you quit? What? I didn't quit? She came crawling back. Chris did some voodoo magic on her and uh, transmission's running smooth. He did a video on that on his second channel. You should check it out. <laughs> We're crossing our fingers that it that it sticks, right? It's been 600 miles. Yeah. Still going good. 